Hi, I'm Ken with Orion Telescopes and Binoculars, and this is the Orion Starseeker 4 127mm Mac Cast Telescope. I'm showing it to you full like this, but first, why don't we show you what it looks like in its constituent pieces and show you how to set it up from its individual parts all the way to the fully assembled product. Um, incidentally, this procedure will be basically the same with all of the Starseeker 4 telescopes. So I'm going to show it to you with the 127 attached, but this works equally well for the 114 millimeter reflector, the 80 millimeter refractor, any of the units in the Starseeker 4 lineup. All right, well, let's get started. All right, so after you've opened up the telescope out of the box and pulled all the pieces out, these are the major components. Um, I'll start on the left side here. The fork arm, that's where the motors are, the whole go-to system, um, the movement is inside there. The optical tube, obviously. Uh, the tripod is up here. This is the bracket that attaches to the tripod leg to hold the hand controller unit on it. And then you've got your accessories. This is the leg spreader. It's a uh, nice solid piece of metal that holds the legs open at the proper distance and gives you some extra stability. And then your two eyepieces, the 23 and the 10 millimeter wide angle, and your finder scope. All right, so once you've identified all the pieces, it's time to start uh, assembling the telescope. So start with the tripod. And I'm going to start with it fairly raised up so it's a little bit easier for me to reach. First thing you'll do is take the arm and it attaches on with these three screws from underneath and they're captive so they're not going anywhere. Just line them up with the holes on the bottom of the arm and screw them in. Just like so. Next you will take the leg spreader and that goes underneath on this central shaft. Each of these little nubs touches one of the legs and keeps them spread in tension so they're nice and tight. Washer goes on first, and then the large hand knob. Tighten until it's roughly snug. It doesn't have to be really tight. Don't really tighten it down. And then grab the legs and kind of pull them apart. It might loosen this up a little bit. Tighten them down again and repeat that until it's nice and snug. And just hand tight is all you need. You don't need to crank this down a lot. Next is the optical tube. It uses this Vixen style dovetail bar. And like I said, all of the tubes fit on the same way. So just in case you don't have this exact one, let's say you have the 80 millimeter refractor, it still attaches on the same way. Loosen the screw and it attaches into the dovetail and you're ready to go. Now. Uh, one side note, I get a lot of people asking, well, which way should it be? With the knob on the bottom or the knob on the top? It really doesn't matter because there is an index mark on both sides. So pick whichever way you like. I, I like to put it on the bottom. If I'm going to a star party and there's going to be a lot of people around that may not necessarily know the telescope or how to use it, I want the knob kind of out of the way because the last thing I want is for somebody to come up and think this knob up on top is the focusing knob and loosen it and the telescope might fall off. So I put it down on the bottom. I think it's just a little more secure and out of the way that way. What you also want to do is try to balance it, get it in the center of balance point. Now I don't have the eyepieces on the back yet, so it may not be perfectly balanced, but at least it's a starting point. Next is the little bracket for the hand controller. That goes on one of the legs. Just, just pick a leg and you can put it wherever you like. I'm just going to put it up fairly high so it's easy to get to. Threads on there. Just like that. Then the hand controller attaches in there. And then look on the mount and you'll find the port for the hand controller, HC. Plugs in right there. Next is your diagonal, if you're using one. With a Mac or the refractor, you'll be using a diagonal. If you have a, um, one of the reflectors, like the 114, the 130, or the 150 reflector, the, the eyepiece just goes right into the focuser. There's no diagonal in the way, so you'll skip the diagonal step. And then your eyepiece. Always start with your low power eyepiece, which is the high number. So in this case, the 23 millimeter, 
and the 10 millimeter, always start viewing with your 23 millimeter because that gives you the widest field of view. And then the finder scope attaches on right here. Now the finder scope will not be aligned. This is one step that I think a lot of people miss. When you, when I just stuck that finder on there and clamped it down, it's not necessarily aligned with the main telescope. So the first time you set this up, you'll probably want to calibrate this. And you do that by finding a tree or a power pole off in the distance. Let's just say there's a tree over here. I'm going to loosen it up. Point the telescope at the corner of the building or the tree or some identifying landmark, at least a quarter mile or more away. Lock it down. Make sure it's centered right there. Then look through your finder scope and you'll adjust the dot using the screw here for left and right and the screw here for up and down. Adjust those until the dot is looking at the same thing that you see through the eyepiece. You might want to verify just in case you bump the telescope a little bit. So recenter it and then verify that you're on the target. That way you know the finder is aligned with the main scope and you can use it for that initial two-star alignment that we'll talk about later. Uh, and then lastly, if you haven't done so already, the batteries go into this compartment here. Uh, eight AA batteries is all you need. Um, if you don't want to worry about carrying replacement batteries, the scope also comes with a power cable, a DC power cable, this, the cigarette lighter plug from your car. So you can attach it there and snake it out to your car um, or some other uh, rechargeable 12 volt battery. We also have an AC adapter. If you're in the backyard like I am here and you've got an extension cord, you can plug it into some outlet. That's probably the most economical way to use the telescope in the long run because you're not replacing batteries. So that's where the batteries go. And that's pretty much the setup. So next would be the computer alignment and how to use the telescope.